स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Dybrook 
which means the bridge for the film that their art would be a bridge to a bright future and a way to communicate their utopian ideals to the society. Because they were feeling this increasing gap between the society and art and they wanted to fill that gap up. And probably that is why this term, die broke, or the bridge came into being. Now, the artists of Dybrook were critical of the intensely materialistic nature of German bourgeois society. Much like the idealistic youth of the 1960s, they felt a return to nature would benefit society and uplift human beings. And that is one of the reasons why you find in the way they painted the human figures on landscape and in the way they also located human figures in landscapes or amidst nature in their paintings, there is something that is not artificial, not fabricated, not synthetic, very natural, very primordial, and also very organic. And in order to achieve this sense of primeval quality, primordial quality, they give up, once again, the conventional academic methods of drawing and painting, and resorted to something that is more instinctual, something that is more driven by impulse and emotion. And as a result, when you look at their paintings, you will find that the expressionist paintings have given birth to very interesting and different ideas about human form, about form and space relationship, about even the look, gaze, and the structure of human anatomy, and definitely colors. A riot of colors can be seen in German Expressionist paintings. And in terms of colors, German Expressionism can be connected to Fauvism. Yes, whether they admit or acknowledge that or not, I have a strong feeling that German Expressionist painters they are greatly indebted to Fauvism because Fauvism was the first movement which showed the path to liberate color. So while the Impressionists had worked hard to record exactly what they saw as natural light hit objects in a landscape, German Expressionists allowed their own personalities to shape their work. This is very interesting. So if an artist is having or going through a psychological crisis, then that artist allows himself or herself to be expressed or allows himself or herself to shape the art that he or she is making. So personal psyche or psychological condition is allowed to play a role in not only the subject matter they are choosing but also in the very uh, technique of art making. Now, so this is something they wanted to encourage to allow their personalities to shape their words, to see the hand of the artist in a world. And it was something to be encouraged rather than avoid it, they believed. So art, then for them, art should not remain neutral or objective anymore. There is no harm to make your art, to allow your art to become very personal, very subjective, and inseparably uh, related to your personal traits. The artists of Dybrook or the bridge were interested in extreme psychological states and psychological moments of psychological anguish. Munch, Edward Munch is perhaps the most obvious example of this. A very well known painting by Munch is called The Scream, painted much before German Expressionism as a movement came into being. This was painted in 1893. And as you already know, German Expressionism came into being in 1906. But though Munch had painted this painting several years before the German Expressionist movement, uh, the way um, Kiriko anticipated surrealism, we have seen that. Similarly, Munch's painting, and this particular painting, the stream, almost anticipated German Expressionism. So it is not surprising that German Expressionist painters would uh, look up at uh, Moore as their role model. And these German Expressionist painters were also interested in traditional German folklore. 
and in the traditional wood block print making, which was developed centuries earlier by German artist Durer. They were particularly interested in the medieval art, that is, a pre-classical, pre-Renaissance art, where beauty, going by the norm of the classical ideas, was not the defining characteristic feature of any art, but pain, anguish, psychological state, and elements of the subconscious, not the way surrealist state, but in the way German expressionist artists felt, were also allowed to take the art. And definitely they avoided all kinds of illusionism, so they were known as anti-illusionist artists, and they used heavy outlines, very strong colors, and uh, there is certainly an influence of primitive art in German expressionist art styles, particularly oceanic and African masks, uh, did leave a great influence and impact on the way German expressionist artists conceived their forms. Now, what is Dive Group? Of course, it is a group uh, that was founded in Dresden in 1905 and it marked the beginning of modern art in Germany. And the name indicated their faith in the art of the future because the bridge connects you with the future which you are trying to envisage and which they saw in their own work. Now, the principal members were, of course, the famous ones were Ernst Ludwig Krishner and then there were Eric Heckel, Karl Schmidt Rutloff, Emil Nolde, Max Pechstein and one of the founder members like Kirchner, he was interestingly not an art student but an architecture student. So they rejected academic tradition, realism, impressionism and they drew inspiration from the German medieval and German Renaissance art to some extent and they also drew their inspiration from primitive art and of course Van Gogh, Gauguin, the Fauvis and I need not mention again the famous Edward Munch, the Norwegian artist. This is one more painting by Edward Munch, painted in 1894, and you can see how did, through this painting, uh, I mean, one could almost sense uh, like a premonition, like an anticipation, the birth of uh, expressionism a uh, few years later, almost uh, 12 years later. Now, Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, if you look at his paintings, his harsh lines, then of course it's awkward anatomy, you can see that how the painter is trying to dissolve that gap and the distance between the artist and uh, the art. Because art, instead of letting art follow a certain given norm, these painters were trying to produce art in a way that the art, the procedure of painting, the forms, the language, the idiom, altogether the style of art would follow a certain psychological makeup of the artist and their intentions. Hence, you find, as a result, a lot of what uh, is called, for the want of better word, distortion. For example, German expressionist paintings, in many paintings you find a lot of elongations, presence of elongated figures. And you also find uh, figures being painted and drawn, avoiding completely any kind of academic realism. So over the years it developed a style of its own. For example, when you look at this painting, which, uh, which, which depicts a very normal scene of a street scene in Berlin, painted in 1913. Even there, the painting is not, at least the feel of the painting is not uh, very objective. It's not an objective visual record of a street scene in Berlin. It is pretty obvious from the way the entire thing has been composed 
and certain kind of facial congestion has been deliberately created to make you feel a sense of suffocation despite the presence of some elegant men and women or for that matter this painting by Ratloff where you can see the figures almost look like wooden figures, like sculpted figures. Even the entire background, the landscape also uh, looks like a sculpted landscape. So, German expressionist painters, beside selecting uh, different kind of subject matters and different norms of painting, they were also pretty free with the style of painting. They were very, they were a kind of exploring and exercising the freedom to the extent that in their art, in their painting, you come across figuration, certain kind of figurations and a certain kind of color palette which you have not seen before. And in this context, one should remember that it is German expressionist artists who also gave uh, a lot of importance to another medium which was hitherto slightly neglected, at least within the practice of art. It was quite profusely used in the uh, field of reproduction and uh, book publishing. But in the field of art, print making was a neglected medium. The German expressionist artists wanted to make their art accessible to common people. And they also did not mind to get their artworks uh, printed in a number of editions. So an artwork loses its uniqueness because now you can have many editions because you are using the print making medium and B because you have many editions, many prints of the same work, it can reach a number of people. So, in a sense, democratizing art was one of their issues that these German expressionist painters and artists followed. And as a result, if you look at the whole range of German expressionist art, a substantial amount of the artworks produced from that movement would be prints. It could be lithography, linocart, etching, or woodcut. Beside, of course, paintings. Emil Nolde was uh, another impulsive painter from this movement who also used religious, traditional subject matters like the Last Supper. But evidently, there is an element of subversion there is an element of ridicule and of course Nolde is interpreting this iconic moment in a very contemporary setting and mindset. Nolde is also very well known for his extremely free blood strokes, what uh, could be considered as a lack of knowledge about how to use pigment properly. He leaves his pigments often in a raw state, but perhaps it is this rawness of his paintings that became very much, that made his paintings very much a part of German Expressionist art movement. Similarly, Eric Heckel, one more artist from the same movement, and you can see in these paintings and print makings, how Eric Heckel, by using or taking advantage of the printmaking, is creating angular faces with uh, a, an expression of agony. Because in most of these artworks created by German expressionist artists, the sense of agony is very evident. And also tension, a lot of tension, a lot of agony. Nobody, not a single figure in any German expressionist art seems to be very comfortable with what they are. Perhaps this is a reflection of the agonized and um, terrified world around. 
And that is also one of the reasons why we have an artist like Kathleen Colwitz, who way back from 1893 and 94 has been painting and drawing and also printing images of people who are depraved, people who are suffering, people for whom death is like a regular companion. And for example, when you look at this uh, drawing by Kathy Colwitz, you can see how Kathy is personifying death as a regular occurrence and she is also trying to address humanity as a helpless kind of community, particularly those people, people belonging to those sections of society who have always been in utter poverty and neglect. So Kathy Colwitz is addressing these topics as her main concern. Then we have the Blue Writer in English, it would be called the Blue Writer, another group or section in German Expressionism. And their publications and exhibition, exhibitions sought to find a common creative ground between the various Expressionist art forms. Vasily Kandinsky, Mark, uh, Franz Mark, then Mackey, August Mackey were among its founder members. So it is a second group of German artists formed. They formed this group called the Die Blue Reuter or the Blue Writer. And the name came from a painting by one of the artists in the group, Vasily Kandinsky. These artists were centered in the southern German city of Munich. Whereas the bridge was formed in Dresden. Now, Paul Klee was also a member of this group, or at least associated with this group. There were many artists who were not necessarily or directly members of this group, but there were quite a few artists who were associated with this Blue Rider School or Blue Rider Group. Within the context of German Expressionism, Kandinsky's paintings might look a little surprising because he is the only one or perhaps the first artist to cross the line into pure abstraction. The post-impressionists had begun the movement away from realism. The Fox took liberties with color and abandoned the effort to portray space in three dimensions. The German expressionists were more interested in exploring psychological inner worlds than in faithfully depicting the natural world. And now Kandinsky completely abandoned the necessity of using any reference, any subject matter of the or from the natural world. Now look at this painting. Traverse line by Kandinsky. There is not a single element which has any referential connection with the outer world. What he is using here is pure abstract visual elements like lines, shapes of various kinds, circles, triangles, spheres, curvilinear lines arranged in a way that even the arrangement doesn't make any sense to the real world. But of course, Kandinsky is one artist who was doing these paintings, abstract paintings, very consciously, and he was to a great extent successful also because he was able to connect his abstraction with the abstraction of music. Kandinsky was perhaps the first artist to have done that. And he often felt the experience of painting music on the canvas or on paper. And music is something abstract. Music doesn't have any tangible visual reality. So this connection is pretty convincing. And it is also more convincing because not one or two, but throughout his life, Kandinsky has painted hundreds of such paintings exploring the possibilities of abstract visual elements either to create certain sensation of the world, certain deeper philosophical significance of the world, or to create the experience of music through visual elements. And in the same group, 
We also have somebody like Batman, who was painting purely figurative works, but once again, never following the classical or traditional or realistic or representational world or more. He is also drawing his inspirations from mythologies, old legends and stories. But basically, there was a strong sense of a social uh, interpretation in his works, which uh, becomes even more jocular and caricaturish in the hands of, for example, um, Otto Dix, or in the hands of uh, other German expressionist painters and uh, artists who started ridiculing the society, particularly the bourgeois society. And one of the famous artists whose works you can see here is George Cross, who was extremely popular because of his um, uninhibited uh, kind of caricatures and extremely incisive, sharp political comments on the people whom he thought were exploiting the common people, exploiting the society, and George Gross was trying to unmask them. Now, so there are certain defining characteristic features which shaped German Expressionism and before we wind up, we must mention that in the context of German Expressionism, apart from hundreds of paintings, few sculptures, a lot of writings, even a film was made in 1919 called The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. And the fact that the goal was to express feelings in the most direct and extreme fashion possible, extreme distortion to express an inner emotional reality rather than surface appearances. And it raises the possibility that this distortion is quite real. For example, Caligari sees aspects of the world not readily apparent to others. So the cabinet of Dr. Caligari is a kind of an epitome of German expressionist thoughts, ideas, and feelings. It more or less embodies uh, everything, stylistic features, the philosophical framework, even the perceptual, social, and political take on the contemporary times. It manifests, it embodies everything that German expressionism is all about. In fact, if you go to the film, even if you don't watch the film, if you look at certain thoughts and sequences like this, you will be amazed to see that way back in 1919, almost 100 years from back from today, in the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, you could see an extreme experiment with the narrative structure, how the legends are, were being continuously upturned and subverted, and the elements of supernatural, horror, psychological issues, and obviously leading to distortion, stylization, stylization of sets, in costumes, of course, extremely macabre and bizarre makeups, and very strange kind of acting and lighting, all handmade. So, German Expressionism is not merely an art movement. It was cultural movement that left its impact deeply on the history of the modern art of the West. Thank you.